I've come to Upton St. Leonard's in the North Cotswolds to meet Sean and Vicky Cassily. Sean and Vicky are the second generation of potters to run Taylor Pottery, which was founded by a group of conscientious objectors in 1948. Though the group dispersed in the 60s, Sean and Vicky continue to make and sell traditional English slipwear from their studio and shop. In a moment, Vicky will show us how she decorates pots by trailing coloured clay or slip and by carving letters. But first, Sean will share his practised method of throwing to make two everyday pots, a mug and a bowl. Here we are on, uh, this is my wheel, this is an electric wheel, simple uh, rear stack drive, press the foot down, goes faster, release it slowly. Clay was rolled out, weighed out last night, so it's had the night to sit and think about things and just steady itself. You don't, a lot of people think you slam the clay on, you don't have to. The wheel head's clean, or in this case it's a ceramic tile, you don't have to break it. You just place it on gently. Now the clay is just wobbling a bit. So I'm going to centre it. Right hand round the bottom. This finger is unnecessary at this point. So I pull, pull with my right arm towards me, which is basically just leaning forward and lean, using my body weight. So I'm not really putting any big muscular effort. This arm, I just use the fat and bone. Just press down. So I just press, pull and press at the same time. Let go nice and gently, and the clay is centered, which is the first stage. Make a hole in the top. Right, I use, because of my technique, and still steadying it, Left thumb on the top, right thumb on the top of the left thumb, just push in. Gently, always relax gently off the clay. Nice hole down the middle. Right hand stays around the pot. Left fingers down the bottom. Bend my fingers, curl it out. This isn't making a bowl, but I'm just showing you the general technique. Like that. And then press the clay from the bottom between the fingers. This finger is still not doing anything. Pot comes up. Gets to the top. This finger comes on top again like that. And just steadies it. Right back down to the bottom. Press on the outside against the inside fingers. And it toddles its way up. That is one of the two pots that anybody can make. That is a mug. I mean it could be shaped mug which should be pressing from the inside to make the full height slightly taller than the pot would be and just press from the inside which you can't see because my hands are on the wrong side of the pot press from the inside to shape it you can, if you're being very traditional finish it with a piece of chamois leather or plastic but don't use a little thin strip of chamois leather because it will disappear. Use a big lump and stag it round the top just to smooth the top off. Like that. And then using my standard throwing tool which is a knife. This is just go underneath and if you want to shape it at all you just run the knife. This is a paint putty knife on it. Around the outside, simple. That's it. Now that sort of pot would just come off the wheel. Cut. I use a twisted wire, not so much for the artistic effect, which is pretty, but because that sort of cut seems to reduce the suction on the bottom of the thing, and it'll just lift off and go down. And the cylinder can become anything: teapot, casserole. A dinner plate is a very, very short mug, but a very fat one. Um, the other shape is a bowl, and the bowls are made differently. Same, same technique though, start off, pull in, press down, a bit more speed, hold the clay, I'll let go so you can see it, so it's centred, which is the clay is in the middle of the wheel. Huh? Press down, mark the top, 
Let's start with the second thumb on the first thumb. Hold in the middle. Now, the difference between a, a bowl and a mug is a mug is made like that, then up. So the shape is a cylinder that is then shaped. And a bowl is made this shape. It's a flare. So you're not actually having a flat, flat base of it. So it comes up, it's a continuous flare. Like that. A bit more than there. You see, there is a certain amount of bubble on the top. People get hysterical about the throwing and they're always doing that. You, if you stop it, you can't see it. You only notice it when you're throwing. So you do that. Maybe, if you're being fussy, take this piece out from underneath because it's in the way. Then the actual shape is all made from the inside. So you throw it like that. First pull. And then if you've been slightly hysterical like me, you use a sponge because it's, you get less finger marks. You just roll it against your hand. And that's a bowl. Uh, the secret of making a bowl is never look at the outside. <laughs> you throw the inside shape of a bowl because the outside is going to be altered. Like that, a bit of a clean up on the top. And then just whack it off. Cut it through. Now you can't lift it off because if you lift it off it will just go <laughs> So we jack out this lovely little ceramic tile. That's basically all the pots you ever make, bugs and bowls, variations on size and shape, finished shape, but they all start off in that way. Now, this is a soup bowl that was made last night. As you see, it's just flat bottomed. And we're going to turn the bottom as it gets through it. So, bare wheel head this time, a little bit of water on it just to make it thin. Push the, the thing on. And just get it so that it's on, and then put your finger against it, have it rotating slowly. And when the clay, the pot's farthest away from your finger, you whack it on that side like that, and a couple of whacks, and years of practice, it's in the middle. Okay, a little bit of clay to hold it on. insurance. Press the clay, put the clay around and press against the clay not against the pot. Turning tools. I have various turning tools of ancient things. These are bought ones, bits of steel and these are homemade ones which I use a great deal which are junior hacksaw blades sharpened and then heated up. You can do it with a even a cigarette lighter, bend them round, fit them on a bit of dowel with a nice smooth cut. So that's the bottom pot. Then you get one of the others, stick it on top, so just tidy them up on the outside slightly. Put in, put it down, Maybe use this one now because it's quicker and this bowl is just slightly down. Use it down like so. What about the bit on the top? This is actually damaged this one.
and the top of the slip tray there um, we put a, a feather in and if you get your feather and you cut it off and then you cut the tip off you can sort of work out how thick you want it. Different lines sort of build up. could be for nibbles or soup or anything really. I actually work out the lettering with pencil first um, and the spacing because the spacing is just as important as the lettering and, um, and I write it on with two pencils because then you can get the thickness again. Um, and I scratch it out with a, a scraper board, which is really sharp. Um, the actual lettering actually eats away the scraping bit, so you need to change them quite frequently, although it's hard steel. And on the wedding plates, they're a really nice thing to do because it's a nice occasion and it's, um, they're all different. Visiting Sean and Vicky in their peaceful studio is otherworldly. Their craft, developed over decades, palpable, whether you watch them work or handle the wares they create.